What we're trying to protect are functioning ecosystems, functioning nature. Water doesn't just come out of a tap, it's produced somewhere, it's produced in a natural landscape. Most of our medication comes from nature. Our fresh air is produced through functioning forests and, and seabeds. Without nature providing us with these services, in fact, humans can't live on this planet. Protected areas are vitally important sites, but there are many places beyond protected areas all around the world that are governed and managed in ways that deliver the long-term conservation of biodiversity, that support ecosystem functions and services, and promote cultural, spiritual, and other important values. In response, Parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity have agreed a definition and criteria for other effective area-based conservation measures, or OECMs. This is enabling diverse actors to identify, recognize, support, and report these critically important places. First of all, rangelands are important to the local communities in that they are the basis of their livelihoods, meaning that their livestock uh, get their food from here, the community get resources from here such as firewood, such as medicinal plants and, and herbs. So we've got a grazing plant that we are using here with the farmers. We need to make decisions together with the farmers because they are here every day. Conservation agreements are contracts between local communities and conservation entities such as ourselves, Conservation South Africa, whereby communities commit to using their natural resources sustainably in exchange for certain benefits. So that's why this land is so special. We work for it and we, we want to make sure that it benefits us as the community members. Sites like Dixie on the edge of protected areas help to form a buffer and allow for those natural processes to move across those fences. The community of Dixie is a great example of how communities can contribute to OECMs and how communities can really contribute to conservation in general. From a personal point of view, I still have a bit of hope, but the, the facts are dramatic. The facts are dramatic, so it's just about realizing what we have. If we kill this, we're going to die with it. So we have to be custodians of 
this landscape, no matter where in the world, we are part of this. Honestly, that's what I believe. So the Wits Rural Campus was established by Wits University in 1989. It really is a campus that enables scholarly activity in a rural area, but all with the vision to contributing towards sustainable development. The campus was never established primarily as a conservation area, but it's a collection of really extensive infrastructure nested within a 350 hectare bushveld property. And the environment has always been an important part of the identity of the campus. To have a functioning savannah ecosystem where we can train our students, where we can run our savannah experiments. My research is based on the impact of food encroachment on soil organic carbon. For us to sequester carbon, we need to understand our savannah and say how can we push, what kind of role our savannah can play. So the importance of research really is trying to understand problems that we might encounter, um, understanding those problems before they can happen so that we can actually come up with solutions. As responsible custodians of this ecosystem, the university has an approach to the management that really reflects our values around sustainability uh, and a holistic approach to managing our resources. We can't possibly hope to secure the biosphere of this planet for future generations if we only focus on formal protected areas. And OECMs are a really important vehicle for that. They provide the recognition and a framework in which to integrate these other land uses within a landscape, complementing what's happening in the formal protected areas. I think there's a lot of scope for education facilities across South Africa and across the world to contribute to conservation globally and help reach their country's conservation targets. So wetlands are the most threatened and unprotected ecosystem type in South Africa. It's really important that we make the effort now to actually just stop, look at our wetlands, appreciate them and the, just the host of biodiversity that they support. This wetland is an incredible site. It's an expansive piece of land in between commercial forestry, but it's a functional wetland with an amazing array of biodiversity. In the landscapes that we live in, they're very fragmented, and these sort of networks of wetlands connect the landscape and provide that connectivity. In this particular case, the Belfast wetlands are connecting the Greater Lark and Flay Protected Environment and another nature reserve. Governance authority is very strict about how the plantations are managed. They are ensuring that the plantations do not encroach on the necessary buffer around the wetland. So they're actively managing the plantation, not just in a sustainable agricultural manner, but they're also ensuring that it does not adversely impact on these large tracts of natural habitat that we have in amongst these plantations. These wetlands support incredible creatures like the white-winged flufftail. The white-winged flufftail is listed as critically endangered. We think there are only 250 breeding pairs remaining in the world. In 2018, the summer of 2018, uh, using these methods, the camera traps, they actually found chicks 
And that was the first confirmed breeding record of the bird breeding in South Africa. There needs to be quite a concerted effort to try and protect the bird's remaining habitat and ensure that it doesn't go extinct. As illustrated by the work in South Africa, these places and the people who can serve them are extraordinary. They deserve to be secure from threats, respected and celebrated. OECMs or other effective area-based conservation measures provide us with a new tool to be able to designate and report on areas of conservation outside of the protected areas network. The only way we can effectively conserve nature is collectively and we can't do it under strict regulations of protected areas alone. We need to look at more dynamic systems that are, that are thriving under particular economies, under particular land uses that can help us conserve the nature that's there. One of the strengths of the OECM framework is that it is broad enough to incorporate a wide range of types of land use and communities involved in managing their natural resources in a way that contributes to conservation and biodiversity management. Recognizing and supporting OECMs across landscapes and seascapes helps to promote rights-based, equitable and diverse forms of conservation worldwide. It's something that it's inside my, my blood, I may say that. I don't even see myself living in the city. No, 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 I will be here forever and I'll see myself being here and to make sure that we keep this land for the next generation. <laughs>